So there you have it. It's official. Kevin Owens is now the longest reigning WWE Universal Champion in history, beating out vacant after only a week. My name is Eric, and welcome to Raw Reactions, first thing in the morning. Now, earlier in the day, we saw Mick Foley and Stephanie McMahon backstage having a conversation, and Mick wanted to know if Stephanie had anything to do with Triple H's actions last week during the Universal Championship match. Stephanie claims that she had absolutely no idea that Triple H was going to interfere in the match last night, and goes on to say that she was embarrassed by the actions of her husband. And that brings us to the beginning of Monday Night Raw. Mick Foley and Stephanie McMahon are in the ring awaiting the arrival of their brand new WWE Universal Champion, Kevin Owens. We're going to have a big old party here, Quebec style. Poutine and Pepsi for everyone! Fans immediately start chanting, you deserve it at Kevin Owens, who gets on the mic and tells the fans that he is well aware of how much he deserves everything he's gotten in his career, and he doesn't need us, the little people, the peons, to remind him. Now Seth Rollins makes his way to the ring and he wants to know how Stephanie McMahon could betray him the way she did last week during the Fatal 4-Way match. Now Stephanie continues to deny having any knowledge of Triple H being involved in that match. Kevin Owens calls Seth Rollins a failure and then Seth Rollins cheap shots Kevin Owens because he can't handle the truth. As a result, Seth Rollins finds himself suspended by Stephanie McMahon. But like two seconds later, Mick Foley decides, nah, why suspend the guy? Let's give him a title shot instead, cause that makes a lot of sense. So yeah, looks like we're getting Kevin Owens versus Seth Rollins at Clash of Champions. Now Mick Foley wasn't done there. He makes two matches for tonight's Raw. Seth Rollins versus Chris Jericho and Kevin Owens versus Sami Zayn. Up next, we got Bailey versus Charlotte. Now it was very important before the match, Charlotte told Dana Brooke to bring a pad and a pencil so she could take notes because I know for a fact, the only way you're ever gonna learn how to be a professional wrestler is to take notes. Early on, Charlotte was in complete control, that is, until Bailey pulled a Hulk Hogan, which I honestly didn't know she could do, got all hugged up. Is that a Hulk up? Get it? <laughs> and then started smashing Charlotte's head into the turnbuckle repeatedly. This wasn't a great match. It wasn't a match you should shit all over either. It was decent. Bailey not only managed to fight off some interference from Dana Brooke, but she also managed to hit the Bailey to belly on Charlotte and pick up the surprising win. Backstage and after the match, Charlotte is giving shit to Dana Brooke, who's apologizing profusely, but Charlotte is having none of it and slaps the taste out of Dana Brooke's mouth. Up next, we have the match that everybody was waiting for. We have Bo Dallas versus Kyle Roberts. Now early on, Bo Dallas seems to have confused the wrestling ring with a high school gym and the actual match with a poetry reading. But once he was done reading his poem, he beat the shit out of Kyle Roberts. Next, we got Chris Jericho versus Seth Rollins. Now, Rollins comes out very strong at first, controlling the pace and hitting Jericho with a suicide dive. Now, Jericho manages to briefly fight his way back into this match, but Seth Rollins has an answer for everything and is back to kicking Jericho's ass in no time. Now, thankfully for Chris Jericho, he knows how to do a springboard drop kick and he got one of those dreaded commercial breaks. You know, the one where before it, you're winning, then commercial break, and then you come back and you're losing. That's exactly what happened in this match. Jericho went in a loser and came out a winner. In the end, however, there is no commercial break on the planet long enough that can survive the devastating impact of a pedigree, which is exactly what Seth Rollins hit Chris Jericho with. Your winner for this match, Seth Rollins. Next we got Sheamus. <coughs> Next we got Sheamus versus Cesaro in match number three of their best of seven series. And guys, without any kind of added stipulation, this is all beginning to feel very, very similar. This was an okay match. I mean, they're continuing with the whole Cesaro's back is injured storyline. So I mean, that's something. 
In the end, Sheamus hit Cesaro with the bro kick for the 1-2-3 to go up 3-0 in this best of seven series. We got Enzo and Cass versus the Shining Stars. This match was basically every Enzo and Cass match in the history of Enzo and Cass matches, except instead of picking up the wind at the end, the Shining Stars won thanks to the dreaded and always deadly handful of tights. We got Nia Jax versus Anne Esposito, someone whose name I took the time to remember this week because she was the first opponent in these Nia Jax squash matches who got a little bit of offense in. I mean, Nia Jax still murdered her, but hey, at least she got the puncher. And then there was the club. Ugh. All right, so the club came out with what was supposed to be the new day when they were older. They made dick and fart jokes for like 10 minutes. Then the new day came out to try and save the segment, but <laughs> that ship had sailed. Yeah, this segment pretty much ended with the new day beating the shit out of themselves, I guess. Fuck my life. Good times just keep on rolling here with Darren Young versus Jinder Mahal. Yay! Nobody cares! Titus O'Neil tried to get involved, failed, and Darren Young won! Try saying that 10 times fast. Darren Young won, Darren Young won, Darren Young won, Darren Young won. We got Braun Strowman versus Sin Cara next. Now, Sin Cara lasted longer than any other of Braun Strowman's opponents, losing by count out, so he lasted about seven seconds longer than anybody else. Next, we got Sasha Banks, who went on for ever and ever talking all about girl power in this women's revolution but she went on talking and didn't really say anything for like 10 minutes and then finally she was about to get to the point when dana brooke interrupted her made her way to the ring got locked into the bank statement and then sasha banks called her miss piggy and finally, our main event for the evening, the Battle of Quebec continues and rages on with Kevin Owens versus Sami Zayn. This was a pretty fun little TV match. I mean, Zayn played up his ankle injury that he sustained in the match with Seth Rollins a couple weeks ago. Kevin Owens got dropped on his head a couple times on the outside of the ring, which looked brutal and dangerous. So yeah, good stuff. Par for the course for Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. An ankle injury and Kevin Owens proved to be too much for Sami Zayn to handle as he was a victim of a vicious powerbomb from Kevin Owens who pinned him, picked up the 1-2-3, your winner, my boy, Kevin Owens. After the match, that coward, Roman Reigns makes his way to the ring trying to take advantage of a weakened Kevin Owens who was just in a war with Sami Zayn. Now Reigns enters the ring, Owens immediately steps out onto the apron when Chris Jericho makes his way ringside, undoubtedly very, very worried about his friend. Foley makes his way out and says that next week Kevin Owens is going to have a match with Roman Reigns and if Roman Reigns somehow pulls off a miracle and wins a one-on-one -on -one match with Kevin Owens, he will be added into the championship match at Clash of Champions. Looks like Foley's been hanging out with that fucker Shane McMahon! Fucking conspiracy! Jericho then tries to attack Reigns from behind, but eats a spear for his troubles to end Monday Night Raw. <sighs> what a long episode of Raw that was. I thought Seth Rollins and Chris Jericho had a pretty good match. Same thing for Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn, but pretty much for everything else, it was pretty bad, it was long, it was boring, and please can we be done with the club and the New Day, because the club has successfully done what I thought wasn't even possible. They made me not care about the New Day, which in itself is a sin. So for that, and for that only, I'm giving SmackDown the win for this week. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button with a steel chair. If you want to join the Broski Club, hit that subscribe button. Go follow me on Twitter at MTL Broski for all the latest first thing in the morning news. Go give the Facebook fan page a like at facebook.com slash FTITM. Go check out my Broskis over at kfabetoday.com for all kinds of great wrestling related content and to hear me have a mental breakdown go listen to our podcast from last week
And until next Tuesday morning, guys, these have been my raw reactions first thing in the morning.